If I surveyed all the good things that come to me from above, if I could count all the blessings from the storehouse of love, I simply ask for one favor beyond mortal man. I'm sure he would grant it again and again. I want to stroll over heaven with you some glad day when all the troubles and heartaches are truly vanished away. We'll enjoy all the beauty where all things are new. I want to stroll over heaven with you. So many places of beauty we long to see here. Time and treasures have kept us from making plans as you know. A morning of rapture together we'll stand I want to stroll over heaven with you I want to stroll over heaven with you some glad day when all the troubles and heartaches are truly vanished away we'll enjoy all the beauty where all things are new I want to stroll over heaven with you. We'll renew old acquaintance with the friends we once knew. We'll meet all our loved ones and see Jesus too. That will be a glad reunion. There'll be much to view while I stroll over heaven. With you. I want to stroll over heaven with you some glad day when all the troubles and heartaches are truly vanished away. We'll enjoy all the beauty where all things are new. I want to stroll over heaven with you. Somebody is praying tonight. A loved one who's wandered away from the light. Faith reaches heaven and God is aware. And forever is changed here. One moment of prayer. Oh, the power in prayer. Power to Waiting right there A few words of a child's faith It's good by despair For oh, there's power So much power There's power in prayer Death holds a body It's parole with pain The doctors have tried but hope is in vain. Oh, but wait, someone's praying in the midst of the gloom. And all at once a great physician steps into the room. Oh, there's power in prayer. Power to spare. All that you'll ever need is waiting right there. A few words of a child's face It's good by despair For oh, there's power So much power There's power in prayer For oh, that power So much power There's power in prayer I can tell you I'm nothing I will be telling the truth. I can say I am worthless, hopeless sinner, that's true. But that's just part of the story, have I told everything? I was lost, reborn. Sin.
the king from Jerusalem. I'm a part of the bloodline of David, that's who I am. And I claim kindred to Isaac, to Jacob, and Abraham. so glad that she's feeling better and uh, first thing we want to do this morning is welcome each and every one that's tuned in to us and uh, I want to say that we appreciate everyone for tuning in each week and as we go to our prayer list we still need to remember John Childress, Marie Nations, Toot Calvin, Lisa Carringer Moore, Katie Carter, Evelyn Luther, Summer Carringer, the Jerry Beavers family, and our own Sandy Carringer. And remember me in your prayers. I've got some issues that uh, we're trying to deal with and Hopefully we'll have these under control before too much longer. We're going to be reading this morning in Galatians chapter 1, beginning with verse 6, reading through verse 10. And the Bible says, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him, that called you into the grace of Christ into another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. For I do now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Fathers, we come to you this morning, Lord. We pray, Lord, for these on our prayer list, Lord, that you would reach down and touch each, each heart. Lord, you know the need of each and every one. And Father, I just pray that, that you would... Uh, Anoint me with your spirit this morning, God. 
Lord, that I would decrease while you increase. God, I just pray, Lord, that uh, your will would be done with this message this morning, God. Father, we just pray that you would bless. Have your way in this service today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Now the title of the message this morning would be, Pervert Not the Gospel. You know, we have different people that has different beliefs. But this right here is a King James Version Bible. It is the only true Bible. Anything else is a perverted version of the Bible. Why? Because it leaves things out and it adds things to. Now the last chapter in Revelation tells us that if we take away any words from this Bible, God would take our name out of the book of life. And if we add any words to this Bible, that it would, He would increase the plagues of the earth upon our soul. Friends, I'm here to tell you today, there's only one Bible. Any other book that you use for a Bible is perverted because it does not include the words that God intended for us to be reading and intended for us to be studying on. You know, we've got preachers all across America, all across the land that take their Scripture from a book that some man wrote because he didn't agree with what the Bible says. And if you're listening to that, preacher, preach out of that Bible, you are listening to a perverted version of the Gospel. And the Bible plainly tells us here not to do that. You know, the first verse starts out, I marvel. Marvel means surprised or appalled. And pervert means to try to change. We're living in a perverted world today. What, what people are not trying to change in the Bible they're trying to do away with and hold. I'm telling you, Christianity is under attack like it's never been before in time. You've got these billionaires, millionaires that want to do away with the Bible. They say it's hogwash. That ain't that that there are not a, not a single word of it that's so. But I beg to differ. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in what He inspired these men to write in this Bible. And I believe it ought not be tried to be changed by anyone. So many people I know of preachers that perverts the gospel by not what they preach, but what they do. I know a preacher that had sex with his daughter. I mean, it wasn't made public until she died. And the autopsy proved that 
she had been having sex since she was 10 years old with her father and him a called, well, I say called, an ordained minister of the gospel. Woe be unto this man on judgment day. You will reap what you sow. Now these men, they have no umption about them to try to have sex with their own blood and kin, especially a daughter. There's people having sex with their brothers and sisters in this day and time. It is wrong. It's just as wrong to do that as it is for a man to lay with a man or a woman to lay with a woman. It's perversion. And if you're guilty of doing this and you claim to be a Christian, you're perverting the gospel. It may not be known now, but it will be known in time. You mark your words and see. You cannot do wrong and get by. Amen? You know, you can take this Bible and rewrite it from cover to cover and get a patent on it, a copyright on it. And you will make millions. But what about Judgment Day? When Judgment Day comes, you'll lose it all. Because God will not accept you into heaven if you rewrite this Bible to suit your own beliefs. I've had preachers tell me, well, I read that, but I can't go along with it. Why not? If God inspired men to write it, why can't you go along with it? That's part of being a Christian, is accepting this book from the very first word in Genesis to the very last word in Revelation. If you can't accept it, you're not pleasing to God. Amen? This world has grown so wicked. You know, we're sitting in the living room earlier having our Bible study, and we was talking about how people ignores what the Bible says. Oh, I can't believe that part. Now, I believe this over here, but I can't believe this over here. If it's in the Bible, you better be believing it. Because God inspired this book to be written as he needed it to be written. Now you got the NIV. They take a whole chapter out of the out of the book of Bible at times, and they change words around to mean right the opposite of what their meaning is. You can change one word in a verse, and you can change the whole meaning of that whole verse, that whole chapter just by changing one word in this beloved book called the Bible. Friends, it's time we get down to business with God. It's time we study the Bible that God intended for us to study. Glory be to God. I believe Revelation the last chapter, that if any man take away 
any word from this Bible, God would take his name away from the book of life. And if he adds to, God will add to the plagues of that man's soul. So I'm asking each and every one of you that's listening under the sound of my voice today, get real with God. Study what God intended for you to study. Don't shy away from this part or this part because you just can't go along with it. If God said it, believe it and let that be the end of it. Amen? Amen! Folks, time is nigh. Tribulation's right upon us. You know, Russia is sending warships to the canal between Cuba and Florida this week. That tells me that World War III is about to begin. Armageddon is closer than what we think. We need to get our lives in, in shape because God is on the verge of returning to earth for His children. Father, I just pray that each and every one that's listening to my voice this morning, God, has their hearts their souls and their minds cleared. Father, that you're the only thing on their mind this morning, God. Father, we just pray, Lord, that you'd speak to each and every heart this morning. Convict the ones that are not up to par with their religion. God, convict them. Let them know that they're wrong. Father, draw them to you that they may repent. And Father, start following you. Start following your word that you laid out for us to be studying in. God, we give the honor, praise, and the glory. For it's in Jesus' sweet name and for your sake. Amen and amen. Well, folks, we hope you'll listen again next week as we bring you more of the truth of the Word of God. Until next week, may each and every one of you have a very blessed, very blessed and highly favored week. In Jesus' name, God bless you all.